Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sal, and on today's expedition, we'll be going to Glen Burnie, Maryland, to the Marley Station Mall. This mall holds a pretty dear place in my heart, uh, because it was the first mall that I visited when I moved down here from the uh, New York, New Jersey area. And it reminds me of the malls I used to visit as a kid. And I think that's largely due because of the, the neon aesthetic that uh, the mall is, is based around. That's the focal point of its design. And right when you pull up to the mall, you're greeted by this neon. It's, it slaps you right in the face. Right on the awnings, um, you have neon at every entrance. And inside the mall, it's, it's just littered with neon. It's beautiful. The, the neon aesthetic is incredibly prominent in this place. And if that doesn't scream 90s mall, I don't know what. But while this mall is still alive today, and it's not dead, it is incredibly fragile. And a few things have led to that. It's been up and down over the years. It's been passed between uh, owners and it's lost anchors. This used to be the Macy's. And it does have some visual signs of a, a, de a dead mall. If you look up at the top of the roof here, you'll see that the dirt trailing down. It looks like it just needs a good power washing. And while this parking lot is dead, it really does need some repair. It's badly in need of some repair. There's craters everywhere and it is empty, you know, even though it's a dead anchor, but an empty parking lot is one of the, the uh, first visual cues of a, a dying mall. And they, they did move the Macy's. The Macy's actually moved out. And I'm not sure if it was an oversight or if it was just, you know, if it was planned this way. But if you look to the right there, you see that the Macy's, uh, the sign, uh, the Macy's sign, uh, sign is actually displaced to the right and it's not right above the entrance and it's just blank. At first glance, it you can't really tell that's a Macy's. To the right there, it's actually behind the trees. But this mall, it is it is special to me, and I really wanted a chance to get in here before it was too dead, because it is losing tenants, and the occupancy of this mall has waved between 60 and 80 percent, and it's at the higher um, percentage right now. But this this whole mall just screams 90s to me, and it's just in badly in need of a good owner and good management. And to give us um, how to do that, we have Mall Madness. I'm mad about shopping! You're mad about Mall Madness! Mall Madness, it's Mall Madness. Attention mall shoppers, it's Mall Madness, the talking shop to your drop game. Fail at the fashion boutique. Catch on Madness, it's Mall Madness. You can love my own credit card. It's Mall Madness. No deposits. Take $100. All withdrawals. Catch on Madness. It's First out of the mall madness. with all their stuff wins. I was born to it's shop. Mall Madness. Ooh. Marley Station opened in 1987. And its original owner was Taubman, uh, the Taubman Centers. When it first opened, it had two anchors, which were Hecht's and Macy's, which is ironic. Uh, and you'll find out why later. There's a lot of empty tenants in here. They, um, they're scattered throughout. And, um, but there is some pretty sweet neon. Look at that blue. How cool is that? That's all over the ceiling. And unfortunately, I did use a GoPro for this one. And I, uh, this is the last one that I use a GoPro for. Um, so the production quality isn't as it should be. But... When you can see it, that neon is just so cool. There's also these um, boarded up sections that just have Marley Station written on it. And over on the left there, there's a huge mall that takes up a lot of space. Two floors, that's a, a pretty big tenant. So here you see Macy's, um, which is one of the other anchors. And um, But back in 1993, 
everyone was requesting a JC Penney's. They all the patrons that that's what they wanted. They wanted a JC Penney. So in 1993, while they were expanding the mall, they added a JC Penney's. A couple of years later, in 1996, they added a, a Sears as the fourth anchor for this mall. And uh, there was another Sears up the street, um, a few miles away, and that one closed down because of that. Yeah, sorry for the low angle here, filming. That was because of the GoPro. This is a super sweet arcade. Every mall has to have an arcade. I'm sorry, but th there should be an arcade in every mall. And you'll notice there's different colored neon. So there's some white neon in the ceiling there. Um, there's some more blue down the end. And they have a few different sculptures here. This one I thought was pretty interesting. So in 2004, the, uh, the Taubman Center, they sold them all to the Mills Corporation. And the Mills Corporation later became the Simon Property Group in 2007. In, uh, two, one year later, in 2005, Hecht's was purchased, the whole company, the entire company Hecht's, it was purchased by uh, the Federated Department Stores, uh, and that was in August of 2005. And Federated, they own Macy's. So all of the Hecht's um, in the country, they were being transitioned uh, into Macy's East and Macy's West. And... Since Hecht's and Macy's were both anchors at this store, at this, I'm sorry, at this mall, they needed to transition the Hecht's to Macy's. Which is why in the beginning we saw that empty Macy's. Yeah, I mean, it's because the Macy's moved out of its old location and took over the Hecht's location, which made sense, because obviously it needed to move. But here we are in the center of the mall, and this is where the, the aesthetic really coalesces. The blue neon and the, the geometric shapes glowing on every reflective surface is just such a cool feature and it's what really draws me to this mall and what, what really brings a lot of sentiment to Valley because you saw that so much back in the 90s. I, I saw it a lot when I was a kid growing up in uh, New Jersey. So the original location from Macy's, uh, they sold it to Boss Cops. And that was in 2006. Boss Cops only lasted two years. And in 2008, um, they had to shutter their storefront, uh, part of their bank bankruptcy case. Now, a few years after that, this is where it started getting weird for Marley Station. In 2012, a company called AINet, um, it's, a, it's a data center, so they, they handle big data for companies, for government. Um, they, it's a server farm, basically. Um, they're based out of Beltville in Maryland, and they wanted to open uh, another location that was um, farther apart so that they had a wider reach, and also so that they were, they were closer to the southern part of Maryland so that they could work with the government a bit more. They bought the old uh, Boss Cos building, which is three stories. And they bought it for $1.5 million. Now they bought it, they bought it outright. Um, at full operational capacity, they expect about 1 billion bucks in revenue every year. Um, so they're a big operation. And they wanted this location so that they had more um, they had more ammunition to compete with the Northern Virginia data centers, and um, the company is AINet, and this location they called CyberNap. But here we go. Here's another arcade. Every mall has to have an arcade. 
And this one has two. I can't understand how it's not going to survive. So this mall has seen a few owners. The first one was the Taubman Center. Now, the original loan was for $114.4 million. Now, due to a dispute with Bank of America, in 2013, the mall was placed into receivership. Receivership is when the lessee can't pay and it needs to find another manager while they're figuring out their dispute. The receiver was the Woodmont Company of Dallas in the Fort Worth area. So they were called in to manage it while Simon got it together with Bank of America. So now you notice this pretty conspicuously empty wing. There's nothing happening over here. And that brings us to our first bit of drama with the Marley Station Mall. In 2013, the bank foreclosed on the property and it was put up for auction. There were, there were obviously some bidders. And one of those bidders was Deepak Jain, who is the president and CEO of AINet, who runs the data center right behind us right now. So once we turn around, you'll see it again when we go upstairs. This used to be the old Boscovs, and it's all walled off. You can't, it's completely sealed. You can't get in. The, they were allowed to bid, but the Woodmont Group, they stated that the mall, we don't want to go in that direction because Deepak wanted to buy the entire place. So they didn't allow him to do it. And ultimately, the TKL East company, they obtained Marley Station Mall. And the Woodmont Group, they still, um, they still managed it. So then in 2014, after 27 years of operating, in 2014 uh, in February, the movie theater, which was um, a Regal Cinema, and originally it was a, a, a United Artist, it shuttered. But two months after it closed, plans were announced to renovate the space and reopen another theater. That's when Horizon Cinemas, they opened up. It was completely renovated, and uh, they opened in June 2014. But look, look at this. It's empty, except for this, this martial arts dojo. There's really nothing happening in this entire room. In 2015 and 2016, the Moody's uh, Investor Services, they re-rated this uh, investment. And it was lumped into a pool of other um, properties, of other mortgages. Moody's reported a near-term rollover risk, and they advised investors to expect a 70% loss on anything invested here. Of the 14 mortgages in that entire pool, Marley Station comprised 29% of the whole pool, which was uh, $400 million. This put Marley in default yet again. In 2015, it was appraised. Now, I'll remind you, it was initially appraised for $115 million. That was the original name. In 2015, it was appraised for $39.8 million. The next year, it was appraised again for $31.5 million. That's over like 80, over 80 million in loss. They put it up for auction yet again. And once again, Deepak Jain, he bid $10 million. The property was sold to GL Harris of the Woodmont Company for $22.7 million. Now, I'm really pulling for my station. I really hope they make it, but they do have to overcome a lot. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video, and if you did like it, please like and subscribe, and if for some reason you didn't like it, let me know why and I will strive to make my videos and content better in the future. Take care, everybody.